Welcome back to the Superbike Italy YouTube channel. Today, as you can see, there is an authentic first for Ducati from two different points of view with me here. The initial fundamental aspect is that this is the first single cylinder motorcycle in recent Ducati history. Additionally, it is the inaugural Super Motard hard and pure model from the brand designed specifically for the location where I am currently situated, a kart track. Today we tested its limits by leaning with our foot and knee on the ground while maintaining constant throttle control. Before diving into the heart of the discussion between wheelies and drifts, let's see how this Hyper is made, starting from the unprecedented engine. A 6M59cc single cylinder engine designed based on the single thermal of the 1299 Panigale Super Quadro twin cylinder and is actually strongly Super Quadro with 160 million of bore and only 62.4 min of stroke. The distribution is carried out with a desmodromic command, while the technical details concern every single area of the engine, from the forged aluminum piston to the titanium intake valves, from the DLC-treated rocker arms, diamond-like carbon, to reduce friction to the two counter shafts that directly move the two oil pumps to save weight, up to the external magnesium covers. This led to an engine weighing 44.6 kilo, producing 77.5 HP at 9,750 RPM and 63 anim at 8,000. From an electronic point of view, we have a package that is essentially overlapping with the latest Panigale with ride-by-wire and an inertial platform overseeing four riding modes with engine maps, anti-wheelie traction control, engine brake ABS, and even launch control, all adjustable. There are also two authentic gems. The slide-by brake, available in two of the four selectable levels for the ABS, aids in skidding with the rear brake by providing input support and helps prevent accidents. And then there is the wheelie assist, which is a world first and it regulates torque delivery to maintain constant wheelies from the first gear to the third gear, even when shifting gears during the ride. Unfortunately, it can only be unlocked by installing the full non-approved Terminioni exhaust. Moving on to the chassis, we have a steel tube lattice frame coupled with a tower and Gisela frame made in the same way, while the swing arm is aluminum. The development of the chassis of this Hyper Motard had a clear objective, to obtain a playful and wheelie-prone motorcycle like a true supermoto, but also with a precise front end at the level of any other Ducati. The fundamental quotes in this sense are speaking clearly. 14.3 mm wheelbase, 26.1 degree steering head angle and 108 mm trail. Weight 151 key in running order WO fuel 48.5% on front. Suspensions can be completely adjusted featuring a 45 mm inverted Marzocchi fork at the front and a progressive linkage monoshock at the rear for optimal performance and comfort. As for the brakes, we have a single 330mm front disc with aluminum flanges to reduce unsprung masses and a Brembo M432 caliper activated by a 15 to 19 radial pump. And lightness has always dictated the choice of alloy wheels instead of spokes, while the original equipment tires are Pirelli Diablo Rosso 4. For the track test, we used much stickier and racing Diablo Superbike Sleek with SC1 at the front and SC2 at the rear. Finally, the versions of the 698 Mono with the RV that differs for the graffiti livery made with decals and paint instead of stickers, as well as for the presence of the electronic gearbox series with blipper and scaling in the case of the bikes of this test. However, the RV were also equipped with the complete Termignoni exhaust air filter and dedicated mapping result, 85 horsepower and 67 newton per meter with one and a half kilos of weight ip as for the prices the rwe costs 1000 euros more than the 12,190 requested for the standard but both are discounted by 1000 euros if you want them in a depowered version for the a2 license <laughs> 
well, we have observed the manufacturing process and also gained some insight into the design approach that was taken when creating the Hypermotard 698 Mono. Now it is the perfect time to discover it from a dynamic point of view, so allow me to share the intense sensations I experienced while riding this remarkable Ducati novelty. The initial method was with the motorcycle that is farthest away from me at this location behind me, the standard version. I don't think I'm saying anything surprising if I tell you that the first approach was an immediate feeling. The secret lies in the low weight as well as the upright comfortable posture. This posture is dominant on the tough road of a super motard, allowing for wide arms and relaxed legs. It also creates a desire to attack the curves, even on a new track. This track is technical and winding, just like this kart track. The combination of low weight, posture and track characteristics makes for an exhilarating experience that encourages riders to push their limits on the supermotored. Beyond the manageability, however, one of the initial aspects that stands out about this bike, particularly when compared to similar bikes, is the increased load on the front end, which provides a greater sense of confidence even with the setup that we started the day with, but has been adjusted for the track from the stock configuration. This adjustment, although not extreme, was made intentionally as a compromise to gradually become acquainted with the bike. I quickly gained confidence in the first few laps with the Hyper Motard 698 Mono, which, due to its weight and riding position, requires relatively little time to adapt to, as we previously mentioned. When I began shooting in the morning, one of the aspects that impressed me the most and caught my attention first were the brakes. Here in front there is a single disc, as we have seen, but between the diameter, the radial pump, the reduced weight, the possibility of really strong detachment is just within reach of two fingertips. Ducati rightly emphasized its outstanding work on electronics, including ABS and the slide-by brake system to facilitate sliding into corners with the rear brake in order to ensure that they are Check so much that this system even has two levels to help you do the tamari sideways here. I honestly have to confess it. I'm quite a mess doing the traverses, so I tried it. I felt that it worked, but I didn't get anything really choreographic. My colleagues, those who are a little more accustomed to the super motor, instead had a lot of fun. But the other electronic system that comes to mind in this regard that instead made me enjoy, especially made me enjoy in perspective for those who will want to learn how to wheelie this, Hypermotor is the wheelie assist, but it comes on the RWE version in our case with the optional exhaust and the corresponding map that unlocks it. This wheelie assist that allows you to perform impressive wheelies while maintaining control and stability. Elevate the front wheel and then essentially it takes care of adjusting the torque while you throw gears at about a 35 degree angle of wheelie, keeping yourself smooth on one wheel. In practice, it provides a system to have perfect photos and videos on one wheel, even for those who are not beginners, but let's say they don't often indulge in wheelies. However, going beyond this parenthesis on all electronic hooliganism and the entire suite derived obviously from the experience with the Ducati Super Sports bikes, which works great both in terms of safety when we tried it at the beginning of the day, a bit more intrusive in terms of intervention level, and then in terms of speed and performance, allowing you to get the best out of the chassis and tires when the intervention levels are set lower. And staying a bit on the topic of electronics, I also really like the ride-by-wire throttle control for its response, very precise as per Ducati tradition, nice and smooth in its medium setting, but appropriately aggressive without becoming uncontrollable or excessively exuberant when set to give you the maximum torquey curve with its 77.5 horsepower from this single cylinder engine. Speaking of evolution, during the day of testing electronics, I also had an evolution in my riding style because as you can see today, I arrived here with these nice Motard boots. At the beginning of the day, I didn't even have the soap bars because I was convinced I could relive my riding style from 15 years ago. Now I'm starting to get old myself, but that's something we'll talk about another time. So I've experienced changes in both the electronic features of the bike and my own riding style over the course of the day, which has been quite an interesting and enlightening experience.
The Hyper Motard is absolutely great to ride with your leg out. So much so that today many of my colleagues, as well as riders of various nationalities, have taken full advantage of its exceptional compliance when you want to bring it upright and maintain complete control over the bike. Inside the curves with the leg out and the foot dragging, but I discovered during the day that my discomfort as a motorcyclist is completely forgotten and I discovered it when I tried to put it back on the soap bars, seeing other colleagues and driving it sporty. So with the technique called Spiegel, outside the bike, beautiful inside, maybe going to look not only for the knee, but also making a scene, throwing out a little elbow. Here, I went much faster than I used to with my foot out, but because of my preference for driving style. The beauty, what is derived from this experience, which I did in particular knee to the ground with the RWE, is that this 698 Mono can be driven equally well in both ways. So it's fine if you are pure motorcyclists who can now also look at the Ducati brand. It's also fine if you are classic road riders who have been intrigued by Motard and want to do some Rizzi and some Traversi. The theme of evolution that accompanied my day in terms of electronic settings, in terms of driving, as I explained to you, went hand in hand with the chassis. The overall experience was truly remarkable and left a lasting impression on me. In what sense? In the sense that if in the morning with the standard bike we used some setups still revised compared to the stock one for the track, but not so extreme in terms of changes in the afternoon on the RWE Ducati, a much more sustained setting repaired it using the stock suspension adjustments and the bike, in my opinion, has changed quite a bit. I found it much more precise with transfers of load still super motored, so quite abundant, but definitely more controlled and controllable. This is the testimony, first of all, of the quality of the suspensions that with some clicks made with science and conscience can actually change the face of the bikey. The difference in performance was remarkable and it highlighted the importance of fine tuning the suspension for optimal results on the track. Then the thing that really made me enjoy it was exploiting it to the limit of my abilities at that point. That is, being able to open it very early with the bike leaned over a lot. Maybe feeling the rear slightly starting to slide under the torque of the Super Quadro Mono. But above all, being able to attack the corners with the brakes and with really aggressive lean angles. And this is what you could be able to do on a Super Motard. And the beauty is that Ducati has achieved it with a basically stock package. Now at this point, you will have noticed a great absence from the speech I have made so far. The engine, the single Super Quadro that I mentioned before, with all its characteristics, its details, how it was born from a rib, so to speak, in a biblical way of the powerful Super Quadro by Tillinder that equipped the 1299 Panigal Final Edition R, in short, all those acronyms that give hundreds of thousands of horses and that in this guise manages to excite primarily a characteristic usually foreign to a single cylinder, the extension, the maximum rotation speed. We said 10,250 RPM is not just a number on the technical sheet. It is really something exploitable from eight to 9,000 RPM. This engine makes the difference in how it likes to be squeezed and pulled up to the red zone. And fortunately, this is accompanied by, it would be tempting to say, with equal measure and average, a good behavior to the lows is fundamental when you turn in very tight bends of a cart track. But it also comes to mind when you will use the bike on the road and you will want to push through the bends instead of the narrower country roads behind your house. In short, I really like this engine and it really has a nice personality. The only point I can make is that it should be born. But this is not the fault of educated people. It is always the fault of our bureaucratic friends in Europe with open exhausts which can cause unnecessary noise pollution. Why not only does it provide you with more pleasure to the ear, to the hearing, but also to your stomach with increasing vibrations. So it not only involves you more in driving, it really pushes you more. Ducati talks about 7.5 HP and three to four N no more on the peak value. But as always, the data on the technical sheet on paper are not very interesting. 
The important thing is that the 698 mono with the exhaust when pushed to the limit shows it has a lot more than expected. The character of the engine is very similar, it is not distorted, but above all, especially in the high part of the rev counter, there is a lot more thrust, perhaps also accompanied by greater precision if possible, since it is already at very high levels in response to the throttle. Typical thing about motorcycles that are stripped of catalytic converters and other stuff that only serves to make the girls with braids from Northern Europe happy. No, not only that, but you know, that's how it is. And it's equipped with an open exhaust that allows it to vent. So I spoke well of the chassis. I really like the brakes. Well, the aesthetics, as you know, I don't like to talk about it because it's subjective, but I like it but the engine here is a true protagonist of the show, and it's a protagonist perhaps worthy of an Oscar. Well, Smanatoni, here from the gates of Valencia with the Hypermotard 698 mono standard and RWE. That's really all, my friends. I disclosed to you that my being a motorcyclist was just a disguise. The outcome was very unfavorable and I was quite upset about it. But above all, my main hope is that I successfully conveyed to you how to ride this groundbreaking Ducati novelty in the world of tough and pure supermotards, as well as the immense joy and admiration I had for it. That said, all I have to do is give you an appointment as always here in the comments. If you want to know more, if you have any particular curiosity, then on all our social channels every day with always new content and still with the magazine on newsstands and in digital edition. And of course here on the YouTube channel next week with a new video that will clearly be as always based on gas.